going on everybody welcome to another film review this time we'll be reviewing the netflix original roxanne roxanne story of roxanne shante and did she say dang did he yeah man so um what you think about the movie man how about i start with the good things okay let's go i'm glad that they picked a, a cast that they picked man Nia long mahershala mahershala ali mahershala ali there you go. Uh, Shante Adams. That's her real name. Right, right. It's, it's her first movie. And aside from that, nobody else really made like a big lasting, lasting impression. impression in right, the movie. Right. It kind of focused on them. Uh, but, you know, anytime that they were on the screen, they usually nailed the acting. Agreed. You know, that's how I feel. And um, I feel like the best shot scene in a movie was when you see her basically laying down to lose her virginity. And then it cuts to her having a the, baby. And yeah. Then it cuts to her being dragged across the floor. I don't know if you noticed that throughout the film, like when, like whenever she was like growing up or anything, like I like how they did that that sudden cut. Cause you know most biopics they go through the long drawn out, like growing up process or advancing time process. But I liked how direct it was, especially in that scene, cause it was just like you went from having a baby or losing your virginity to having a baby, to unfortunately getting abused. Yeah. And it was just such a vivid way of showing it, especially he's dragging her by the hair and everything like that. So, yeah, that was real powerful. Yeah, I, th I thought that was the best shot scene on the movie. A lot of the other stuff I felt like they kind of threw in just, you know, because it's like kind of like Easter egg things for fans, like the Nas thing, the Bismarcky thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, Which I, I did not cool know anything MC about. Shan, yeah. You know, MC Shan, Marley, Molly Mar, and all of them were all there. That was cool. But, you know. You know, it's uh, but I, I like the the kind of scenes of her battling and stuff like that, and and just how they portrayed her, you know, being a rapper and how confident she was in her skills and her ability, and she she kind of just did it, you know. What did you think about like you know how they started out with her young self and like you know that first battle? They kind of just cut mm -hmm. and they just kept going. I I thought that was kind of unique in a way. Like I did want to hear it, but at the same time, it kind of got you anticipating for when she was finally go spit something. And when she finally did at that boy who kept on picking with her or whatever that like that. That was awkward. It was really awkward. Yeah, like how <laughs> she just kind of just came out rapping super hard. <laughs> yeah. It, it was awkward. But I, it, it worked for the film, I guess, in essence, because it was just like, okay, she's already been going through all this junk, and that was just the final straw. So I get I get why they shot it that way. Uh, what did you think about the lead actress and, you know, her role as Roxanne Roxanne? I feel like she did the best she could do with the amount of material they gave her. Okay. Because, I, I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, I thought the whole movie was a mess. Okay. I, I didn't like it. Well, <laughs> yeah, but what else did you like about uh, Chantel Adams? That was it. Her okay. Like, her ability to act. Like, her ability to convey. How did you feel about how her, you know, her rapping voice and everything like that? I didn't have a problem with it. I okay. thought it was cool. I mean, it was, it was believable. Right. You know, I mean, the only thing that it, it was like. Some parts I felt like it wasn't enough, and then there's sometimes I felt like it was too less. I didn't feel like okay. there were really many parts in the movie where everything was like it was the right amount of something. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Because like, I, I'll give you an example. Like when we find out, like her and her mom kind of beefing, beefing. I didn't really realize that her and her mom had a problem until like she told her, you know, you know what time my door lock, and she walked outside like, man, she always messing with me. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh, you have a problem with your mom? I didn't know. I didn't know this this whole time. Well, it was kind of early on. I mean, it yeah, was it fairly was, early. Yeah, it was about 15, 20 minutes in the film. a couple interactions. And, yeah. You know, the whole thing about her mom taking a drink, and then she was an uh, uh, alcoholic from that point on. It was kind of like that when w that part was a little drawn out. I felt like we didn't get enough time. because it was enough time for a lot of things. Because I think that was just like, it kind of let the viewers know that, okay, this is when she started having this problem. And that little nod was just the beginning of that. Even though we didn't get to see a lot of issues, like when she moved out and, you know, she called her sister and was like, you know, mom's been drinking a lot. Like those little things help fill in the blanks. But like you said, it's a lot that was missing that even though we probably don't know the full history ourselves that we can tell that was missing from the film. So I can understand what you mean by that. Uh, moving on, Nia Long, how did you feel about her performance as her mother? I mean, she did good. I mean, Nia Long did what Nia Long does, and that's usually nail the role that she's cast to nail. But at the same time, it's like the material. I, I know it's somebody's life, you know what I'm saying? And 
but I feel like the movie made more sense probably to her than it did to us. Mm-hmm. Because I honestly felt like that's the problem with biopics nowadays. It's like you can't always really execute it well. No, well the problem was it's like I don't feel like the central story was followed the way that they wanted it to, and mm-hmm. it, or if it did, I, I missed it because to me it came across as like very sporadic thro- thoughts. Like she kind of just took these memories and like these are the memories we're gonna use for the movie and mm-hmm. kind of threw them in there because there was barely you know I like for a while there. You didn't even know how old she was until, like, I want to say, like... I, I I won't lie to you. That I was questioning that the whole, like, you know, first 45 minutes of the movie because I was just like, okay, I know she's older now, but how old is she? And it was, like, never really fully explained. That. And then the few times they did say, man, she's 16. Yeah, I was just like, yeah. I was just like, okay. Because I remember, them, no. I remember them saying she was 14, but when she was 16, I'm like, yo, okay, yeah, How, when did this happen? That's exactly what she said. She was like, exactly. She's like, when did she turn sixteen? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know she was sixteen now. Yeah. And then there, there was just like, just parts that you know. I ca- I kind of so felt was he was so was cross abusing her because he didn't like her feeding on him the whole Shanta, Roxanne Shante want to be. A well, what I got thing. from that is that what I got is um, Mahershala's character came off as kind of possessive in a way. Um, in fact, that I think he didn't like when he didn't have ownership of something like you know when he it, it just kind of came off the way as just like he just was a really selfish type of person with any kind of thing like even with the whole i guess drug dealing he was going on with he was on the phone like yo you took that from me you did it this and this and that so anytime he felt attacked it was just kind of like you in my space and like anytime a dude came up to her and everything like that he would get like overly controlling and stuff like that i'm like yo yo chill but um yeah, I, with that, with his character, I thought he did his job. I mean, with really characters like that, you really don't have to do much. <laughs> I'm s- sorry to work an uh, abusive character, but I thought he brought some kind of humanity towards the character because one of those scenes, he looked like he really did care about her, but you realize that's just a trap that they always get young women to, into, unfortunately, where, you know, you ever felt love and everything like this before like that. Um in that respect, you know, I thought that was kind of interesting how they showed that relationship because I don't hear much about how, like, you know, all underage kind of dating was at that time compared to now. We see and hear about it a lot today and stuff like that. But I think one of the main problems for me was Nia Long's character really wasn't in a good midsection of the film. I kind of felt like she was at the beginning and then the end. And we really never got to see her reactions of when she was like ra- ra- uh, rising in fame and everything like that. The only reaction we got was like, "Oh, I like that," and this, this, and that. So I, ca- I kind of felt like good. A lot of character moments between her and mom was missing, in order us to feel the true impact to what she felt about her and Cross's relationship. Yeah. And I think that was one of the real major issues. But I felt like you know it started off well and ended well. Um, what did you think about? You know, I guess the cameos or features with Biz and Nas and all like that. How did you feel like that affected the movie as a whole? I mean, like I said, man, it was like those were the Easter eggs for fans that uh, that know hip hop and everything like that. Like soon as you know, she ran into the kid the first time. He said he was Nasir. I was just like, I was just like, oh, that's Nas, definitely. And they brought it back towards the end of the movie, but it it wasn't like. A moment where it's like you know when you see an Easter egg in a Marvel movie or something, it's just like oh <laughs> shit, yeah. Like did you catch that? Right. Nah, it wasn't like that. It was just like okay, that was not nice. okay. That's Biz Marquee. If, so if he's gonna be her DJ, he's gonna go up there and beatbox. Obviously, like they were cool moments and you know cool to see. Like those are some of the things that she went through in her career. Like you know Dougie Fresh and everything like that. But it was just like overly not impressive to me. You know, like like I said, I honestly feel like this script was kind of crappy. Yeah. I, I honestly felt like that. Yeah, but I, I can't understand that. I can get what it was trying to do as though, like, especially showing how, you know, women in, a, like, a male-dominated type of field could feel during something like this happening. Like, you know, when the guy played her out her money and everything, and the girl, I forget her name, was it? I don't remember. Something D. I feel like it was something D, but... um. Sparky D, yeah, Sparky D. I feel like, you know, that moment right there kind of stood out to me because even though they were battling every show and everything like that, she still stuck up for her because, you know, she was a woman. 
and I thought that can speak volumes to the viewers and anybody who may be an artist themselves or going through anything like that. So through that respect, I think the movie, the film did that well, trying to like, you know, elaborate what a female artist might go through in the industry. I'm pretty sure they some of them still go through those same things today. Yeah. So I think that that w- I think that was overall aim. I think they captured that, but as far as like, you know, pacing and editing uh, here and there, I thought it could help a lot through the midsection of the movie. Because I feel like the beginning, I think it started out real well. I, I like how, you know, they went through her um, childhood briefly until, you know, when she was a teenager and everything like that. But I felt like the midsection of the movie was like really here and there, here and there. You Like you say, you're getting bits, bits and pieces. And by the end, you really didn't have that lasting effect. But I still thought it was an overall good presentation. But what would you give it? Well, first off, I just want to say, uh, actually, would you watch it again? Yeah, I would watch it again. I, I would never watch this again. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend anybody else to watch it. Okay. And I, I'm going to get this joint a D. Ooh, I think it needed work. Like, yeah. like I said, the acting was pretty good. It's just... It's confusing. It's it's all over the place. It just sounds like somebody that was just remembering all of these moments in their life and just writing all the moments down and then having somebody try to trace them together to see. Well, I mean, what, what, when you think of biopics, it's like how well can you do with biopics now? And with like Ray? Well, yeah, but I'm just saying, biopics are kind of hit and miss, so I understand why you think that critically of it. Yeah, I mean – that I feel like I learned something. I, I learned a little bit more about Roxanne Shante. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, did she influence Nas to become a rapper? Well, I think possibly it, ma- it made me want to actually go and look up more about her, which I did. You know, I went and watched a couple of interviews and everything like that. And I think that's you know the aim of a biopic to actually get you to learn more about the source material. So I think in that respect, it kind of achieved that because I was kind of interested to learn more about the title character and everything like that. So I thought that was cool. Yeah, so you would watch it again? Yeah, I could watch it again. I gave it a C plus. I thought it was solid. You know, not too bad. Like you know, can I think it was just really terms of pacing, man. Just the pacing really threw the movie off. And if they would have had a little bit more time, I guess to shove a little bit more in, maybe it could have pre- been appreciated a little bit more. But I didn't think it was overall bad. They they could have handled. I mean, hell, the get down is kind of like in a way the story of hip hop, and they found yeah. a dope way to do that. Yeah, and it's like. I know it could be done, but I just felt like this was this was kind of sloppy. They just needed maybe a better. Uh, I can't remember the person that kind of just ties everything together better, but you know. Yeah. All right. Well, let us know what you guys thought about the film, and you know your thoughts about it. Um, feel free to leave a comment, share, like the video, and you know, stay tuned. Yeah, man. Make sure you go to the YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell. You know, I just watched a video talking about how that they don't send notifications to everybody on your subscriber thing that the new video came out. Really? Yeah, that's some crazy shit. But do it anyway. Okay. And then subscribe to the podcast, also the, the Report Card Podcast on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Google Music Play, TuneIn, Stitcher, Lips, and all those places where you can find podcasts. And yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, y'all. Take it easy. All right, peace. Peace.